Good evening and welcome to Serpentini Field here at Pacatan Stadium in Strongsville, Ohio, where the Strongsville High School, High School Mustangs will take on the Blue Devils of Brunswick High School. My name is Matt Lawler. I'm here along with Al Leonard. Uh, Al, what do you have to say about these two teams as they enter their final game of the regular season? Well, this is a big, big rivalry. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still pretty fierce. Now, Strongsville's got a 6-3 and three record, and they're hoping to sneak into the playoffs. Now, Brunswick's only won one game, but Strongsville can't walk out on the field and figure this is going to be a cakewalk, and uh, we're going to go to the playoffs. First of all, they need help from two other schools. Now, Brunswick's only won one game, but there's nothing they would enjoy more than beating Strongsville and saying we officially knocked them out of the playoffs. This has been the last game of the season for both clubs for years and years and years. It, for many a years, it determined the Pioneer Conference Championship. So it's a fierce rivalry, and the records don't mean anything right now. Brunswick wants to knock Strongsville out of the playoffs, and Strongsville wants to get to the playoffs. So this could be a real blow-to-blow -blow game, and we're going to find out what happens in just a few minutes. Sounds good. Sounds like an exciting matchup. Well, as uh, there's, there's festivities tonight for the last game of the season, a lot of seniors are being introduced. So as they're doing all that, Al and I will stroll on up to the press box and we'll see you later. Good evening, everyone. It's Friday, October 26th. It's 7 o'clock. That means it's time for high school football. We're moments away from kickoff, and there's big, big rivalry. These teams have fought for years, and always the last game, and here we go. There's a kick. Joey Gillette fields the ball back at his own three-yard line. He's running. He's got a big oh, hole. He's got a hole. The kicker has left the tackle, One and he's passed him at the 50. He's the 40 to 30. 20. I see no flag. It looks like a touchdown Strongsville for the opening kickoff. What a way to start the game. That didn't take long. My goodness, what a hole that created after he caught that ball. Definitely good. So seven nothing. With only 19 seconds really off the clock here, and that's the way you want to start. My goodness. So now Strongsville will kick off to Brunswick. Well, I can hear you. I'm just usually we can hear ourselves and each other. It's just not. So we had number 15, Taylor Jaden, back deep for Brunswick. Along with number seven, Van Winnie. And number four, Anthony Stample. John Kramer to kick for Strongsville. Here we go. Kick goes That's to the near jam. side of the field, the number 15. He brings it up to the 30. Down about the 33 yard line. Number seven, and the wind team. Kramer on the tackle. Takes the ball for Brunswick. Kramer. Stop made by number 43, Jesse Kramer. So Brunswick has the ball at their own 34 yard line. It'll be first and 10. They got three receivers spread out to the far side and one split on the near side. Quarterback back to pass. He looks over the middle, overthrows. Pass complete. Could be uh, Target number two, Sam Rafe. Nerves, adrenaline running at the beginning of the game with a well-thrown ball, but it was e. way over the Geis head of the receiver covered. cutting across the middle. Second down and ten. Oh. Second and 10 for Brunswick. A 
There's a snap handoff up the middle. To number 11, he chukes off to the far side of the field. He's got a first down and more. Pass midfield, down about the 46 yard line of Strongsville. All right, that's, there Jayden you go. Taylor the ball here, I'm sorry. Okay. Number 11, Dakota Lavender the ball carrier. Pickup of about 14 yards on that carry. It'll be first and 10 in Strongsville territory. Seven in motion. Pass and 10 for number 15 goes incomplete. Second down again. Number 43, Jesse Kramer. Passes seems like the receivers are open. It's just uh, perhaps the quarterback's a little, mm, got the adrenaline pumping a little too much early in the game here. So hopefully that settles down for him later on. Second and 10 from the 46 yard line of Strongsville. Two receivers spread out on the far side, and two on the near side, one lone back. And in motion, we've got a movement. Ball start on the offense. That'll push it back to second and 15. Ball start. Yeah, we're good now. Second and 15, there's a snap. Hand off to number 15 on the far side of the field. Oh, he, he cuts got up some field room. and he picks up about 10 yards down about the 40 yard line. Gillette on the tackle, huh? Nice little gain for Brunswick. Jaden Taylor, the ball carrier. Stop made by number four, Bobby Hardy. Also went on the stop, number 43, Jesse Kramer. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the, the down marker says fourth third and the scoreboard yeah, says I think two. It be, I think it should be third down and five. Or third and four. Okay, now the ref's going to try to figure it out too, I think. Because it was second and 15 and he picked up about 10 yards. So I thought it should be. Okay, the scoreboard's showing third down now. Third down, there you go. Third and four for Brunswick. Let's not get like the NFL now, huh? They're packing it in tight. They got a tight end, a pair of tight ends in there. They might try to force it up the middle here. Let's see what they want to do. One receiver split out on the near side of the field with a wing bat tucked in tight on the right side. Isn't that power Mo Movement eye. again okay. on the offense. So they're oh. shooting yourself in the foot. Sorry, oh, call they called a timeout, well, all right. A few misfires here in, in this series, but uh, hopefully they can regroup here and get things back together. So Nine. 10 minutes to go in this first quarter. Uh, if you missed it, uh, Strongs was scored on the opening kickoff. No one was even near him on that kickoff. No. Really surprised with that one. But he was had, literally take advantage of that. He was literally it untouched. It's a shame on this, this rivalry is Years ago, 45 minutes before the game, there was not an empty seat on the visitor side. It'd be standing room all the way around the stadium. But, uh, and unless things change, their, their head coach, Rick, he's never on the field. He sits up in the press box. He, he coaches from the press box. Never on the field. Really? He's been that for years. But, uh, well, maybe he could see better. So there we go, third down and four. He Back to pass. Is oh, he's being no chased. He's he ain't chased. going he's anywhere. He's pulled down, sacked by Lawler. Way back at the 44 yard line. Sack. My goodness. Wow, good timing on that sack. Might 
not make it in. About the five yard line yeah, is where they'll down it. At the five. So Matthew James on the punt. Had a nice punt in tight there to put uh, Strongsville in a difficult starting position for this, really their first series on offense. Second thoughts, I wonder if he should have fair catch that ball. Let it roll. Well, now we're starting deep. Strongs will set up with three receivers on the far side of the field. Do they have enough guys out there? One, two, three. Yeah. Single wing back. Handoff up the middle. Nowhere to go on that one. Trying to find a hole, and he may not get back to the line of scrimmage. Let's see where they spot it. Gain of one. Looks like they will put it right about the. Eh, they gave him a yard on the play. Rather generous. A little dancing around, but nowhere to go. The defense plugged those holes quick. Well, uh, I don't know. Sometimes in high school, you almost have to hit that hole a little quicker than that. Yeah. But, uh, I think they'd love to pin us back here deep and make us punt from our own end zone. So second and 10. Tyler Walters, oh. the quarterback. Oh. Ew, caught it and dropped it. Intended for Taylor Griffin. Uh, the ball was dropped, so it'll bring up third and 10. Uh. So we got a about a 49 degree temperature here at game time. It's uh, hopefully the rain holds off. Yeah, there's a chance of some. Just sprinkling here and there throughout the, the night. So Walters is back to pass on third down. Oh, that was almost picked Walter off. Pass is yeah, falls incomplete, so it'll be fourth down in uh, about nine and a half, so they'll have to punt. Target number 14, Brent Jones. So they'll be punting from their end zone. Brunswick defense did a nice job on stopping them yeah. there. I mean, Walter seemed like he had a decent amount of time in the pocket right. there. Good coverage by Brunswick. So, uh, and he, I mean, it was surprising. The pass was intended for number 14, uh, Craig Jones, who I don't think has been intended as a receiver yet this year. So it was um, interesting that they did that. Hopefully they mix it up a little oh, bit. Oh, good high punt. Good kick there by oh. Johnny Major out to the 45. He fair catches it, falls about the 43-yard line, where Brunswick will take over. Stampo made a nice catch on that, made sure he got it. So they're going to have good field position. Brunswick, we got Noah Bartzak, the quarterback, in shotgun formation. Two receivers spread out on the near side of the field, one in motion to the far side. Handoff up the middle, the number 10, and oh, he Oh, he jumped immediately. Just shy of the line of scrimmage. Ron Savage was, on that tackle. Snicky, the ball carrier. It's almost like Savage knew the play. He was in that backfield, like untouched. Well, you know, so, sometimes the coaching on either side of the field can be that good where they do know the play, but I know mentor is that way. Yeah. Well, they have enough coaches to field their own team, yeah. so, <laughs> assistant coaches. So here we go, second down and 10. Keeper, Keeper. up the middle. Oh, he's and nailed he's again. Nailed it. He'll probably get to the line of scrimmage where they'll mark it for third and 10. Kramer was one of the uh, initial bulls to hit him. Strongsville is definitely pumped here on defense. If only their offense had that adrenaline. If they could shift that over there, they would be a little better on the offensive side. So Brunswick has third and 10. Got two receivers spread on the near side. Wing back in motion coming our way. 
There's a snap back to pass. Oh, he's got him open. Chase out of the pocket. Looks like it hit the ground before it got to number 15. Intended for Taylor Jaden. So, so that'll force Brunswick to punt. So they couldn't. They had the good field position thanks to the defense forcing that punt, but they couldn't do anything with it. Three and out. So, well, going to the air was a good idea. That seemed yeah. to work for them uh, off and on the last series. So here we go. We Taylor Griffin back to receive the catch. He's going to let it go. He's going to let go out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Oh. About the 17, 18 yard line is where they'll take over. That seems like both teams right now, their offense is struggling. You take away that opening kickoff, we've got a tie game. It's been all defense. Neither neither unit can seem to find the play to work. Well, that's sometimes how it goes until you try things out the first half, you regroup at halftime, and you come back and work on uh, what works. So Taylor Griffin in motion. He handed it to him. Oh, he got a hole. Hand off and he's got a, he does have a hole up the middle. He got a first down on that one. It's about a 15 yard gain. Dakota Lavender on the tackle along with Quinton McKinley. We have Jamie who's doing some spotting with us tonight, so I appreciate the help, Jamie. We haven't had that in the past. You always need extra sets of eyes doing this. Especially with me, I wear glasses. <laughs> <laughs> can't watch everything. Oh boy, Taylor he got Griffin another one, look carrier. at him go. Plenty of room to run out past the 45 yard line into uh, Blue Devil territory. Blue Devil territory. Uh, Taylor Griffin with the ball carrier. So that's about a 23 yard pickup. So first and 10 from the 43 yard line. A little shifting going on around here on offense and defense. Colin Karate in motion, hand off the Griffin, off left tackle, and he stopped at a, uh, he might give him a yard on that one. So that'll bring up second and about nine. 44. Curtis. So Hellman, one of the tacklers for Brunswick. So he got, yeah, he didn't gain anything on that play, but. I gotta apologize ahead of time to anyone from Brunswick that's listening. Well, the roster that we have has some double, doubled up numbers. So we'll take a guess at uh, and we need a magnifying glass to read it. Well, you need one. I, <laughs> I just need a pair of really good reading Oh, glasses. good pass under nice coverage pass like by that. Walters. Yeah. Oh, he's out of the pocket to uh, Colin Karate. That guy was in his face. He's like, get that ball off and had to throw it across his body, and that was a great pass. I think they only have 10 guys on the field. Handle off to Karate up the middle. Oh, he's gone. And a nice hole. He's gone. And it's off to the races. My goodness. Offensive lineman could add a boy on that one. What a hole. 36 yard run on that, right up the middle. Yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to what was, I'm not sure where the secondary was. Were they up, were they up tight? Oh. It didn't seem like there was anyone past the linebackers. They've had some big chunks on yardage. Uh, Friday's had a 36 and uh, Griffin had a carry for 15 and another 23, so. Uh, We've got the running game going. Nice hold, Kramer kick. 
kick is made. Nearly blocked, but the kick is good. So 14 nothing with uh, 422 left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, it's almost as uh, it's almost would be nice if they had kept stats uh, for offensive linemen like they do for running backs and receivers. Yeah. Where you know you were you were on an offensive line where the offense accumulated this many yards. Right. I mean that to me that would be impressive. Because yeah, wait really, all those offensive linemen should be carrying those stats. Right. That's those are all those their it's stats. It's like you went over my hole. I opened it for That's you. Right. You got 10 yards. What do I get? That's I get right. bruises. You get an MVP trophy at the end of the year, and I get band-aids. <laughs> well, the offensive linemen understand that when they take that job. So it's, that's why I believe a lot of teams, what they'll do is on a usually a Wednesday night before the game, here's a kickoff by Kramer. That's uh, fielded by number four, who gets out past the 35-yard line. It's Anthony Stample. But what uh, high school and college and uh, NFL teams will do is during the week before the game is the running backs, quarterbacks will take out the offensive linemen to dinner. for dinner. Like they need more food. Well, <laughs> they do need more food. <laughs> That's why they're but linemen. They can't play anywhere it's else. It's really an appreciation <laughs> dinner. So and it's, it's good that they get into practice of knowing who to think. Things like that. Or so Tom it, Brady or, or Bertie Kozar goes out and buys them all gloves. Savage. Oh. With a, with a hit on the quarterback. And Six, Noah's seven, taking a little toe for He gets up. He's up. Five, Lamette, a hit, hit Let's see. So I think Zach Savage was on a blitz on that play. So here we go, second down and 10. There's a snap. He's going to keep Keeper it. Keeper on the left side. Probably a good play call. And he gets a few yards Davis on that. Keeps the ball in that quarterback. Jack Pasek the on the tackle, number 57. Jake Boyle. So third and about six for Brunswick. Snap hand number, off 11. number 11. Oh, he had one guy to beat. He pick up about three yards. And I'll take it by number 11. Dakota so Dakota Lavender. Lavender, the ball carrier. He'll be short. So it'll be fourth and three. And it looks like the punt team is coming out. Clark, one of the players also to hit him. Number 21, Garrett Clark. It looked like he was going to make it, and Clark closed that hole real quick. So, um, so Taylor Griffin back deep to receive. Justin Hagler, the punter, here's a snap. The good punt. Up. Another good punt. And Griffin's going to let it go out of bounds out again. Bounds. Oh. Looks like it stops right near the sideline at the 20 yard line. They must have been watching the game films because they do not want to punt at the Griffin. They don't want Griffin to be anywhere near that ball, and he's well, deliberately I, punting it out, out of bounds. Really, on any of these high school special teams, I would just kick it away from everybody because you never know what's going to happen. You see somebody small back there, looks like a fidget. You know he's fast. You don't want him getting that ball. Some teams will use special teams to play anybody else who hasn't been playing yet, but uh, I'm not quite an advocate for that. I, it's good to put them in there, but uh, you also want your special teams. Special teams are very important, so you don't want a, your uh, opponent to score on that. So they're going to start at their own 20. Walter's and back he's to pass. pass. He's looking right on your away. side. Oh, he's, he's got him open. Adams and he throws him. long. So Nick was was open. Looks like he made the turn about the same time Walters was throwing. I think he thought he was going a little faster, but nevertheless, they got uh, second and ten. 
It was a good effort. He had plenty of time back there. You gotta have some pretty good confidence in your quarterback and his judgment when you're gonna turn around and pass on first down at your own 20. That's right. So we got trips on the near side. They're stacked. Look at the right. Look at the right end. The linebackers playing him. The There's right where side. he's going. Oh yeah. Pass is complete to number 12, whose name I've not called yet. Cooper Hawk on the reception. It's good to see they're spreading the wealth out a little bit on the uh, passing side. Yeah, he had those trips on the left, and I called that play. The linebacker was playing, and he was by himself for a little bit. Third down and seven. Looks like about third and six and a half, or third and seven. Again, we got the trips on the near side of the field. Same, same lineman. And off up the middle. Oh, he's got it. He's got the hole. To Griffin, he's got the first down. No flags. Taylor Griffin picking up another strong two. Table ties unlimited. First down. So that'll be first and ten strongs well, from their own 37 yard line. Not made by number 20, McKinley. There's a 14 yard run again. Yard line. Okay. Karate in motion. Option Pitch to Karate. To Pitch to Karate. Oh, he he's tripped up. Turn. He might get a yard or two on you. Number nine on the tackle for a Brunswick, Adam Miryushak. There we go. Karate, the ball carrier. So no gain on that one. No Strongs for going with two tight ends. Well, there is a little bit of rain falling out there. You can see it in the lights. Thankfully, it's not wet in here yet. <laughs> Although there is a big hole in the ceiling. Well, there's but, been uh, there's that's, been that's games. For, a purpose for that. It's to access the roof. So. Over the years, there's been a couple of these games between these two teams where they had snow. Oh, and, I believe it. And mud. That was before we had the turf fields. Karate up the middle. Pickup of about. Three yard lines. Then I'll bring up third down and seven. Saris on the stop for Brunswick. Stop made by number 33, Spender Rayback. So the two tight ends come out and they put in the two receivers, including Johnny Major, who is a really an all purpose athlete out there. So Looked for something to do with him. Uh, I don't know if they get the this maybe play off before the quarter. Yeah, nine seconds, eight seconds. Let's see what they do. No. Nope. Yep. No, they did get it off. Pass over oh, the middle to Gillette. He threw a bullet. So they're out past midfield down about the 46-yard line. And that's the end of the first quarter. Strongsville 14, Blue Devils nothing. It's very a very assertive pass there, right over the middle. It was thrown with with authority. Hey, usually my partner in crime here has some stats for us as we have a break in the action. So what do you what do you have there, Al, for well, some officially numbers? Walters is throwing six passes and completed four. Not bad for the first quarter. But they're getting some chunks. Their running game's working for him pretty good, and they're getting some chunks of yardage. Griffin's got carries of 15, 23, and 14, and Karate's got a 36. So they're mixing it up between the two of them, and they're kind of balancing the running and the passing game. So first and 10 from the Brunswick 46-yard line. Adams in motion, and it's handoff. Oh, we got a double reverse, reverse, and he's got nothing but field. Joe Gillette around the near side of the couple field. Couple of blockers, he stopped. For a couple blocks, but we didn't get him. So it brings him out to about the 40-yard line. Pick up of six on that play. 
eight. Yeah, the thing is with these, uh, when you do the reverse, it's uh, it's hit or miss. Either you yeah. get it or you, or you get it. It, it, was, <laughs> it was set up nice. He had the blockers out in front of him on the right side, but they just stopped blocking. I don't yeah, know if they want to turn did. around and watch the play or what. All of a sudden, they closed in on him, but well, it's still got eight yards. Receivers and blocking, that doesn't always go together, but anyway, they try. They'd rather catch the ball. They don't want to block. That's right. What's his blocking? There's thing? another hole for him. Yeah, talk about blocks, boy. He follow his blockers up that middle. So first down, uh, Taylor Griffin, the ball carrier. Grayley on the tackle. Brings it down to the 28-yard line. So there's another chunk for him. And so it looks like they're doing the trips on the triple stack on the far side of the field. And we have number 12 on the near side. I don't think we've seen this formation. Griffin alone back, back to pass. Oh, we got there's interference on that one. Number three went over his back. Yeah, Weta went over his back before yeah. the ball even got there. Good idea by the defense. It just get, you just can't touch the guy. But this, uh, this, this stack trips uh, in an eye over on the left side. This is the first time we've seen that play this year. So they've set this up strictly for this game. That's another table ties on the limited. Strongsville first down. So they'll give him 10 yards uh, and, an, and an automatic first down. So. Brings him inside the 15-yard line to the 14 of Brunswick. We've got twins right and left with uh, Griffin alone back next to Tyler Walters, the QB. Looks like they might be centering the linebacker here. Back to pass. Is Walters. Throws it. Oh, we're going to have another. Nope. Incomplete intended for number 14, Craig Jones. It did look like he was hit beforehand, but. Yeah, it looked like he came over his back before the ball got there, but. So second and 10. You know, Walters had plenty of time there. Even with a couple of guys stunning, it, it's still the deep offensive line was able to keep him back. So we've seen this before. We got the triple stack on the far side. But I see they've moved over on the right end a little bit. They didn't give him the. Oh, we got that lateral. Pass again, over to like. Nick Adams. Look at the block he the got block over there. Over there by oh, he's Craig in. Jones, and he's looking for the end zone, but I think he stopped short at about the one yard line. Good tackle by the Brunswick. Uh, Defender down there who held him from getting in the end zone. And he picks up a cable ties on limited. Yeah, Strongs will bring in their two tight end offense. So it's first and goal. Ten minutes to go in the second quarter. 14 nothing Strongsville. Got Griffin alone in the backfield. And, and that's off who's the Griffin got up the it. middle. He and he's right in the middle, touchdown. Taylor Griffin in for the one yard TD punch. Once again, that's steady blocking up front. So Strong's, Strong's has been able to pound three touchdowns, relatively quick touchdowns, really down the throat of Brunswick here. It's so far of all the games I've seen this year on Strong's, this is their most dominant start. Right. Oh, yeah. So it'd be nice for, I guess, Strong's fans if they can keep it up. Brunswick, of course, would like something different. But here's the kick. Nice hold, Kramer kick. It is good. John Kramer's kick is good again, so it's 21-0. I wish we could have done this against Solon. <laughs> that was a that was a great game. Yeah, they keep getting closer and closer on those extra points. So hopefully, special teams coaches are picking up on that. Really, on both sides of the field. 
It's a real fine, misty rain. So this is the final game of the regular season for both teams. Right. Both teams, of course, are in the uh, Greater Cleveland Conference, which is a very stacked conference this year with Mentor, Solon, Euclid, and Strongsville. Uh, the first three are ranked in the top. Well, they were in the top Greater 10 in the state. So Strongsville trying to hold on to that final playoff position with a win here and a Hopefully, if we get anybody with a smartphone, we can get the scores of those other two well, games. I happen to have a phone here. I'm not sure how smart it is. Here's the kick by Kramer. It's on side kick, and but I think it looks like John Kramer recovered his own kick again, which I think is a third time this year. It's quite impressive. So Strongsville will take over. They caught him sleeping. That's, they're, they're talking about, the refs are talking about this, making sure it went far enough. Let's see what they do here. Well, it has to go 10 yards before Strongsville can touch it. And I think that's what they're probably discussing. First down, Strongsville. Yep. First down, Strongsville! Jack it's the consensus. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Jack. Jack Stevens is the one who recovered the ball. You know, jumping on the ball is one thing, but hanging on to it in a yeah, you get about in a pile guys. is not easy. Especially if you're claustrophobic. You just got to protect everything. Eyes, midsection, everything. Well, of course, the ball. It should be your primary responsibility. But all right, so we got twins on the far side and the near side for Strongsville. Colin Crotty, the ball carrier, up the middle. Hey. Major, handing off the ball to number three, Colin That's about Crotty. Three-yard game. Strongsville has switched out quarterbacks. Uh, Tyler Walters has taken a break while Johnny Major, the backup quarterback, is in there. Johnny, who started uh, over half of the games this year as QB, is, if, if you've seen any of those games, he's quite an athlete. So. You're in for a real treat here. Let's see how they use him. He keeps oh, he the ball. Tried to keep it. Johnny Major keeps the and ball. And it gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third down. And about Top eight. eight the Blue Devils, I think Johnny just needs to get the uh, cobwebs out of his running shoes. He'll, he'll get it. So the two games we got to keep our eye on tonight is uh, Maple Heights and Cleveland Heights, and uh, Hoover and Maslin Jackson. And Strongsville would need uh, Maple Heights and Hoover to win. Major back to pass. Oh, nice floater right Tenant to him. for Nick Adams, who catches it and gets down near the 30-yard line for a first down. So we on the tackle for Brunswick. So yeah, <clears throat> looking at the uh, Division One, Region One, where Strongsville's number eight spot. Maslin Jackson is right below him in ninth of uh, Cleveland Heights. Well, if records mean anything, Maple Heights is 9-0 and oh, and uh, Cleveland Heights is 7-2, and two, and we want Maple Heights to continue to win. But then we've got to keep an eye on that Hoover game. Major keeps the ball around in on the option. Pick up about eight yards on the play. Bring up second and two. Lindsay and Lavender on the tackle for Brunswick. So really, Strongsville needs the four teams under it to lose, which is uh, Maslin, Jackson, Cleveland Heights, Medina, and Berea Midpark. I think Maslin, Jackson is the one that's the... Yeah, that and the Maple Heights game. So we get somebody with a smartphone or that, we could try to get those scores. So second down, I'm sorry, second down and three. 
Joe Gillette in motion to the near side. Major back to pass. Oh, he got him by the and ankle. He's tackled right about the line of scrimmage. Hellman uh, grabbed him by the ankle and he had nowhere to go. So third down and about six for Strongsville. Major back to pass. Oh, nice floater right into him. That double coverage, he still just floated that ball right to him. For a first down, so it brings it down about the 16 yard line. First and 10 Strongsville. So here's a Current score for uh, North Canton, Hoover, and Jackson, 7-7 in the second quarter. So we got a tie there. Anything on a Maple Heights, uh, Cleveland Heights game? Fourteen six, Cleveland Heights. Oh boy. And off to Taylor Griffin, who breaks a couple tackles. A couple of Brunswick guys are down. Touchdown, Strongsville. That one looks to be hurt uh, yeah, that is pretty bad. So Cleveland Heights is currently winning in the first quarter against Maple Heights. 14 to six. I wonder what the six is. Is it a touchdown or is it a touchdown at a missed field goal, perhaps? You can't always judge the game by the record. You would think that uh, Maple Heights would would be beating them because they're nine and oh, but uh, well, Cleveland Heights has two losses, but right now they're winning. Well, you don't want to see that in any game of the season. No, a player going off the field. Your Mustang boys soccer has played in 19 district finals in the history of the program. And the gentleman who's down on, looks like he was a lineman, was holding his knee when he was down, so that doesn't sound good, but hopefully. Again, by beating Magnificat 4-1. This is the girls. think turn out here. So I want to recognize our offensive linemen while I get a chance here, because again, they should be the ones accumulating all the stats. Uh, number 64, Francis Lally. Number 67, J.D. Duplain. Number 70, Sam Egbert. 75, Ryan Seafelt, and number 78, Patrick Grealis. Congratulations once again to the cross country. Guys, from so Strong's just getting ready for the extra point here. John Kramer back to kick. Remember, the last three of these. The last two have been close. What's going on here? Swap out a player. There's the kick in. Oh, it's right good. through the middle. 28 nothing with 606 to play in the second quarter. Well, if you're strong, so you gotta feel pretty comfortable with this lead. But I may say, though, there are there is another half to play. Mm. Get part of half of a quarter and another half after. So, not to say anything can happen, but I do want to say that. So <laughs> keep your if you're Brunswick, you gotta be optimistic. So Kramer and the kickoff team for Strongsville getting ready to kick off at their own 40-yard line. We 
get three deep for Brunswick. I'm not sure I like the idea of three deep on a kickoff. But well, you know one of them's going to get it. That's right. Someone's going to get it. But right. Oh, and it goes through. That would be a flag. Bounds, it went out of bounds. Be, uh, it's a penalty, which is really kind of a good thing for Brunswick because they get good field position with this. It's one thing you do not want to do. Strongsville voters, just a reminder that Tuesday, November 6th, is election day. Our school district has an operating levy, issue eight on the ballot. So we for those of you out watching out the game, which no one 6th. would be listening to this, I guess, if you were watching the game out here, but the, la the rain has it's lighting up a little bit, so Taylor that's good Griffin news. has chalked up his 17th touchdown this year so far. The weather is, temperature is holding at about 47, 48 degrees. Well, it's a good thing that front didn't come in sooner or what we're going to get tomorrow we'd have right now and it's supposed to be nasty tomorrow just all day cold rain so blue devils will start at their own 35 yard line strongs will show and blitz and oh, oh batted down batted down by number 15 andrew keating Pass batted down by number 15, Andrew Keating. Second down and 10. It's always fun to do that as a defensive lineman. Mm -hmm. well, what's more fun is to catch it and just watch <laughs> yourself try to run. <laughs> there have been no fumbles yet. No. So that's one thing that Strongsville defense is in at least the latter part of this season has been pretty good at doing. 21. Garrett Clark on the stop for Strongsville. I'm the only one. Vaughn. So third down and about five for Brunswick. Trips on the near side, twins on the far side. You assume it's going to be a pass. Batted down, or no? He was hit when he threw pass it, and he caught complete. it. Good. Just past the first down mark. Blue Devils pick up the first down, pulling in the pass number. So four. Jonah Clement will a completed pass here. So there's a first down. Just when they needed it. On coverage for the Mustang. So first and ten. Number and 23, on sophomore, Shane Slokar. Line. And off up the middle, and he stopped. Oh, I'm sorry. Is he stopped? Yes, he was stopped. That was a... A backer doing a little bit, little extra blocking. Pick up of about three yards on the on the run. Hellman was having a good time for Brunswick on there. He just blocking and blocking and blocking. First on the hit, he delivered one. Got a player Number down. Thirty-two, Zach Savage shaking up a bit on that play. Doesn't look good. Finishing off the tackle. Number four, Bobby Hardy. So over the years, this has always been a, a fierce rivalry. And a few years ago, I had the pleasure of bringing the Brunswick football team to Strongsville. And I had one of the coaches in the front seat. Well, what Strongsville had done is, the minute you cross, you're coming down Pearl, you cross Boston Road, they took green paint and they painted green on the lines all the way down Pearl Road to Lund. And they had signs on all the poles and ribbons. I turned around, looked at that coach, and you just swore somebody took his mother's picture out of his wallet and painted a mustache on it. He was red in the face, hyperventilating. <laughs> they used to have a lot of fun those two schools years ago. The things they do to each other. Oh, he's got a nice. Oh, they got. Had a big opening. He gets stopped short of the first down. Jaden Taylor, ball carrier. Picks up seven yards. Stop made by number 43. Jake Boyle. 
Well, he was just about to turn that, and Jones come up and just smacked him up high and stopped him dead in his tracks. So third down and three inside Strongsville territory. Off the right oh, side. he started to cut, and they just, oh, he's got second effort going there. Let's see what they give him. He got maybe, maybe a yard. Fourth down and one. Obey, I think, made the final one. Xavier Vaughn comes off, number 73. 76, Blake Miller, the freshman, replaces him. You know, our last game, we didn't have Blake Miller even on the roster since he's a freshman, so I don't even know how tall he is or big he is, but I'll tell you. Oh, what. I think they oh, stuffed him. Oh, he did not get it. Short of the first down. Good job by the Strongsville defense. First down, take it over. So Keating was one of the animals to stop him. The way our linebackers were playing back a little bit, you thought a quick hitter would, you know, beat him to the hole, but more they moved up quick and at first it looked like he was gonna get it, but they closed it up very quickly. All concession proceeds benefits Trumpsville bands and orchestras. Make sure you get your grubs so that you're back in time to watch another spectacular performance. Strongsville, so Strongs will take over here. First and ten from their own 44-yard line. They got twins in the far and the near side. It's a direct snap to Taylor Griffin. And the flags fly. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it looked like uh, they're trying to catch him sleeping. I think it was a planned play. Right. But uh, I'm not sure what the. It might be that they might not have had, had at least, they might have had more than one person not set. Let's see what they call. Hey, folks, all season long, I've been telling you how awesome the Prats are. Those of you that have been buying them know that they are worth the price of permission. If you've not had one of Ed Beerfield's authentic Prats yet, you're really missing out on a strong soul secret. But poor Ed is sad. He's had no one take him up on his offer to autograph one of those juicy babes in stadium mustard or ketchup. For a play, place like that, that uh, I know in basketball year, you try to tell the officials prior to the game if you plan on doing anything goofy. You know, anything well, I think, I think on this penalty it's not going to be an illegal procedure. I think they're calling on sportsmen like... That's a major penalty. Oh. Now they're going to throw another one, throw I think, against the coach. Yeah. I think it's the coach down here on the left side. So, uh, I don't think he was happy with the call, and uh, now we got another one. So we got a 30 yards in penalties and 10 to go. So first and 40. So this is going to be a what? First down in the bus ride. Well, sometimes and, and it, a, it's silly. Get something in their head. They, yeah. they don't okay. want to hear anything else. <laughs> best, it's best just to keep keep quiet. So we got the triple stack on the near side. We've seen this before alone. Running back next to Tyler Walters. Back to passes Walters. Oh, and that's batted, batted down. down. Passes it for second and 40. Dominic Sposal. So Strongs will try to overcome. Second down and 40. 
a little diversity here. They haven't had to deal with yet this game. Here, here, here. Let's see how they deal with it. On the flip side, though, Brunswick seems a little pumped on defense. I guess I would be, too, if you're looking. I mean, you have, you've you got to keep them to 40 yards, right? Man. How hard could that be? So they have a little more confidence now than they had before. Plus a batted pass. And off up the middle to Griffin. He's got holes galore. Brings it down past the 30. So that'll be third and about, uh, about 20, 21. So they chipped off about 19 with that run. Third down and 21. 21 to go for a first down. Well, there's, a, there's one and a quarter of the penalties back. <laughs> yeah. Now we got a third and. And off again to Griffin, who bounces it outside to the left side, tries to find a hole. He gets past the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be fourth. Fourth and about eight. I wonder if Strong so will punt here. Stop eight by number 46, Dominic Spozel. So I got about 13 yards back on that, so. Ball in the first half. Fourth down and eight. Once again, Strongsville voters, just a reminder that Tuesday, November 6th, is election day. Our school district has an operating And Strongsville takes a timeout. With uh, 33 seconds remaining in the half. Going to figure out what they want to do here on fourth and eight. The SFL Strongsville Youth Football League would like to thank all the 2018 sponsors, including this year's premier sponsor, Van Beer Sandu. So Strongsville with, uh, I think they have 23 seniors graduating this year. And not all starting, of course, but it's quite a class. And they're going to lose some key players. Yeah, a lot of these, well, let's just say a lot. About five to six of them started as sophomores. Folks, did you buy your ticket for that Chevy Cruise? So let's see if we got time here to check this, soon, some other scores who's driving away around the region. Better chance than uh, the lotteries have been going on here this past week. Should be close to halftime for those other two schools that we're uh, keeping an eye on. There we go, fourth and eight. Walters back to pass. Throw way downfield. Oh, nice catch. Joe Gillette, who catches the ball, tries to stay in bounds. He's out, though. He was blown down or out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. Impressive play, good protection, good pass, good catch, and good, good run after the catch too by Joe Gillette. So they knocked off that they were first and 40. Now they're <laughs> unreal, they isn't first it? And 10. It's quite a, quite a hurdle to overcome. Good for Strongsville that they did it. So 24 seconds to go here in the half. We've got twins on the far side and the near side. Griffin, the lone back. The snap to Walters. Back to pass. Over the middle. Oh, Bob. goes incomplete. Double cover. I don't know if that was the safest bet, but it was a well thrown ball. That's just amazing that. You know, you got a first and Number nine. 40, and you, and you end up getting it back. Well, I mean, a lot can be chalked up to confidence as well. You know, if, if we were if we were down, if Strongsville were down, there'd be a lot of nervousness going on, correct? Right. So they, weren't, they, they did not seem nervous on that set of downs. 
if they were, that they'd be even harder to do. So we got uh, two tight ends here. Walters back to pass. He looks far the left side. Oh, oh and he overthrown. overthrows Richie Roscoff, pass number 87, who is the tight end on the near side. In on coverage for the Devils, number 11, you know, that's another another receiver they haven't thrown to all that much is the tight end. So it's, it's nice to see, again, a little mix-up. Johnny Major back into the game. I assume he'll be a receiver. So watch out for him. 14 seconds to go. 28 nothing Strongsville in the first half. Griffin alone back. We have movement. Yeah. Naturally, when every, every time and the defense jumps, they always point to the offense. That's an automatic. Well, you got to do that. And apparently, it's the human he's way. He's right you on that time. Somebody. Yep. He's a, that's what they told me to do. We so always want a scapegoat. Well, I did it, and it worked. They're backing it up on Strongsville. So it'll be third down at 15 from the 25 yard line. 14 seconds to go still. Johnny Major in motion. He's going to keep it. Walter keeps it. He goes around the right side. He's got an opening. Another block by Gillette, and he and makes I it think into the in. end zone for a touchdown. touchdown Impressive. Brownsville. Blocks downfield. Well executed. Fakes there by Tyler Walters. I, I like that play. So did he. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was surprised at how far he could go. Uh-huh. They go. I guess I'll go a little further. And thankfully, Gillette was on the ball down there to make a block so he could get in the end zone. Flag was thrown. I'm guessing it was on the defense because that's the area it was thrown at. Unsportsmanlike against Brunswick. Not quite sure what the ref is doing here, but it's unsportsmanlike conduct. And he's pointing to the defense. Okay. And I guess he's saying they'll take it on the kickoff. It'll be assessed on the kickoff against Brunswick. So Those we went from about the 10 yard line all the way down. Usually when you got a first and 40, it's like, okay, you run a couple of running plays and punt. But uh, nice to hold. when you get the score on your side and the confidence, I guess anything goes. So Kramer back to kick. Here's the kick up and and it's good again. It is good. Sure. Four seconds remaining in the first half. Blue Devils sure, zero, the kicker zero. took a hit there Garrett at the end. Well, either way. So 35-0 with four seconds to go in the half. I'm sure Strongsville's feeling pretty confident, but uh, if we, they could do 35 points in a, in a half, I'm sure Brunswick could... We got any updates got on those other two games, Matt? Well, I st I'm still showing 14 to, to six Cleveland Heights over Maple Heights, but that still says first quarter. Mm. So Kramer's back to kick. And I still have uh, North Canton Hoover 14, Jackson 7 in the second quarter. Squib kick down in the middle. They field it at the five yard line. Coming up the middle, some good blocking and some good running down near the 30 yard line about the 27 yard Ladies line and, and that'll run the clock out zero, so that's halftime again 35 nothing Strongsville over Brunswick here at, uh, at half Jake Boyle for so as Al and I will take a much need get some hot chocolate and warm up a little bit enjoy the bands at halftime we got Brunswick coming out first along with uh, well that'll be followed by Strongsville so we'll see you after half
Good evening, Mustang fans. Tonight's an exciting evening for us. Due to the generosity of Serpentini, we're going to pick the winner of our Serpentini car raffle. With us this evening out here is Booster Club member Robin Micko, Booster Club President Dan Martin, from Serpentini, Janine Hine, School Board President Carl Naso, and School Board Vice President Colonel Duke Evans. So now's the moment we're waiting for. Janine's going to pull the winning ticket for us. And someone's going to win a brand new Chevy Cruze. Janine, can you find a ticket? <laughs> Say she's working on it. Okay, Janine. The winning ticket is Jean Lupchin. Jean Lupchin is the winner of the Chevy Cruze. So by the girls soccer team, congratulations. On behalf of Charlottesville City Schools, Janine, thank you. We appreciate your generosity. Ladies and gentlemen, Brunswick High School is proud to present the 2018 edition of the award-winning state finalist, Brunswick High School Marching Blue Devils. The marching Blue Devils are under the direction of Jane Wardeska. The band is led on the field by drum majors Matthew Dietrich and Dylan James.
2019 production entitled Symphony Fantastic. Next, we present Ozzy Osbourne's Dreamer, featuring Carson McKenna on baritone. our production tonight with the finale from Symphony Fantastic.
Presenting the 2018 Strongsville High School Marching Mustang. The band is led down the field by drum majors Robbie Bardo and Natalie Sintron. We open our senior night show with a song from 1977 made famous by Saturday Night Fever. Here is Disco Inferno. our senior band members as they come to the center of the field. We will be performing a song they chose tonight. Here is a medley of Billy Joel tunes from my life and only the good die young.
staff, we want to thank you seniors for your dedication and enthusiasm for the last four years at Strunsville High School. Let's hear a big round of applause for our seniors. Finally, we'd like to close our show with a catchy funk tune from Cool and the Gang. Here is Jungle Boogie. Getting set for the opening kickoff here of the second half. Kramer's kick is fielded down about the two yard line by Brunswick, and he comes back out to about the 25 yard line where they'll take over. That's Jaden Taylor on the return. So Brentwick will start off with a clean slate here. With, under the assumption that it's a, well, that they can make up this deficit. And Strongsville's gonna try what they can to hang on to it. So 35 nothing. As we start off the second half here. Brunswick with the ball. Trips on the near side. Pass to number four. Is complete. And he's tackled after a short gain down about the 30-yard line. It's Anthony Stemple on the carry. So that bring up about second and five. We've still got a very, very light drizzle, but the temperature's dropping. So I'm sure the fans are going to appreciate the running clock. So second, it looks like four. We get twins on the far side and near side, 15 in motion. Hand off around end to 15, who cuts the corner and he gets a first down for Brunswick, past the 40 yard line. 
So number 15 is Jaden Taylor again. Seems to be their go-to guy. Stop made by number 76, soft freshman Boyd Miller. So first and ten, Brunswick so far with a little more, I guess, a little something going on this half. So let's see how they do here. Quarterback keeps it around and he gets a couple yards. So it's Jonah Clement on the ball carrier. Pickup of about two. Stop made by number 43, James Boyle, and number 15, Andrew Keating. Second down and eight. So the second and about eight. We got trips on the near side, twins on the far side, no backs. Clement all by himself, back to pass, looks to the near side. The ball was tipped on the way in as Zach Savage comes through. He tips the ball and it falls incomplete. Pass is batted away. We're in third and about eight. Zach Savage. It's good to see Zach Savage back in the game. He came off the field in the end of the first half there with a limping a little bit. So it's good to see him back. So Strongsville's hoping to hang on to a win here uh, after uh, you know, getting two halves of play to go. But uh, there are a couple teams that do need to win as well for them to stay in the playoffs. So back to pass is Noah. Looks to the near side pass, complete to 44. He's passed the, uh, he's right about oh, the first. Oh, he got, he got nailed Near lower. the first down he marker, didn't see that it looks coming. like he was nailed. So the ball popped out and Strong recovers the ball at their own 49 yard line. He was just about to go down and the guy took him down low with the legs and he wasn't expecting that and I think that uh, Garrett Clark hit him pretty good, and they went low, and I think that's what knocked that ball out. Well, you know, Brunswick had it going there. They had a, they had a nice little drive going. That's they needed they needed something like that to get, to get some points on the board. So Strongsville will take over. It looks like they're at the 46-yard line. Johnny Major, the quarterback, option to the far side to Taylor Griffin, who just gets around the corner, a pickup of a couple yards. You know, you look at the score, and it's like Custard's last stand, and then you get, a, you get yourself a nice drive going. You want it to be somewhat respectable, and then when, when that happens, you get that fumble, and it just takes it all the air out of your sails, and it's like, okay, now what? Boy, that running clock really. And, yeah. Just, I mean, and now it's, it's it's starting to drizzle a little bit harder really like it did in the first half. Right by. Surprise, we're already halfway through the, uh, or nearly halfway through the third quarter here. Griffin with the ball around and and picks up about four yards or so. They'll bring up about third and about three. Well, what's nice about this uh, field here that Serpentini helped to, to sponsor is it's, yeah, it's, the, it's wet out there, but the field really isn't that difficult to play. Well, I'm no. not playing on it, but it's, it's not that slippery. It's not soaking wet. It's got a good drainage system under it. So those, these new fields are sure nice. So Johnny Major with the, the ball carrier and sneaks around yeah, the Yeah, looks like he might have fumbled, yeah, though. I think he may have fumbled as well. So let's see what happened. He was near the first down marker. The Brunswick coach seems to be all excited, but. Uh, no one else seems to be. Yeah. So fourth, fourth and. Barely. We got half a yard. Yeah. 
if that. It looks like the width of the football will give him a first down. You know, has, has Strongsville even gotten tackled for a loss today? I don't know if they have. I don't think so. So Aaron, look at the ball that. Aegis, goodbye. First down and more. Tackle down inside the 10 yard line. Another nice hole by that impressive offensive line who keeps accumulating the stats today. So there's another about a 35 yard gain. So first and goal from looks like the 10 yard line. We get two backs, one in motion to the near side. Oh. Pass, pass goes through the hands of Joe Gillette. Well thrown ball. Second and goal. Right now Griffith's somewhere around 150 yards in rushing yardage. Very close, somewhere right in there. So second down and 10. Same formation. Two backs, Griffin and Gillette. Gillette in motion to the near side. Looks like they're trying it again. And, and complete again. again. Hmm. All right. Well. You know, uh, if you watch that, it, I don't think that was going to work too well anyways. You had three defensive backs just right waiting there, there. yeah. And only one blocker. I mean, Gillette's a good runner, but he's not that good to get through those guys. You've got to have a really good arm when you throw those sideline lateral passes like that because if a defensive man reads that and steps up and picks that off, it, it, can, uh -oh, it can go an right. easy six points. You catch one out there and you usually only have one man to beat. If you've got any kind of speed, it's, uh, you're taking it all away. I hope they don't run that same play again, but no. here it goes. Back to pass, and he looks down over the left side just through the hands of Richie Roscoff, the uh, tight end on the left side. So fourth down. They're going to go field goal unit here. So that was Brunswick's goal line stance. So they weren't able to do that in the first half. They right. were in the second so far. So. Unfortunately for them, though, there's two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Not to say that it's over. I'm just pointing out our time left. So Kramer back to, to kick here this extra point. The kick gets off. And it's through the uprights. Nice kick. The Strongsville goes up 38 to nothing with 2.20 to go. So I assume Strongs was going to keep trying to kick it away, but not kick it out of bounds. So temperature out here is still about 47 degrees. You got a little bit of a mist out there. Where are you getting this 47 at? It feels like That's 27. Right, just going by the app here, right? <laughs> I don't have a thermometer, but oh, right. I don't want to know. I live by the app, right? I'll believe you 47. I don't think I want to know if it's any colder than that. Well, I'm sure it's colder on the Brunswick side. Yeah. 
but they get a chance here to re redeem themselves. If they get another drive going like they had last time, but, but hang on to the ball. Okay, well, let me correct that. Uh, let me put a little footnote by that uh, temperature I gave you. 45 degrees, but the real feel of with, with wind is 38. So, all right. Now that I believe. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll go with that one. So one minute to go. Back to passes. Noah Campbell. Oh, picked, picked off, off, and I don't. Picked he may go Joe all the way. way. He goes all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. Oh, I'm sorry. It's EJ Geis with the ball. He's in the right place at the right time. He caught it, and he took it right in. Wow. Well, now defense has scored. So we got the extra point unit out again. Getting a workout today. That's one special team you'd like to have out there often is the extra point team. Well, extra point and kickoff, right? Mm-hmm. So Kramer back to kick. It's up and it looks good. So 45 to nothing with about a minute to go in the third quarter. That's John Kramer's 40th extra point have we got any updates on those other two games, Matt? Yeah, we'll take a look. I'm currently showing uh, Kent, North Canton Hoover over Jackson in the third quarter, 21-14. And the last score I have with Mass, Maple Heights, and Cleveland Heights is 14-6, but that's the second it's, quarter. I think it's 22-21 to 21 now, Maple Heights over Cleveland Heights. So oh, okay. right now, that's, if they'd end, that'd be good. I mean, Strong's and those are going to win. It's like, okay, where are the other two teams doing? Are we going to go to the playoffs? Kramer back to kick here. Tries to kick it away to the far side. They decide to flip it to each other back there. And takes it down about the 26 yard line. Brunswick will take over 16 seconds, and this will probably run out the clock for the third quarter. Well, and at the end of three quarters of play, Mustangs 45, Blue Devils nothing. Not a lot of offense for the Blue Devils thus far. It's been all Strongville, a very dominant performance of three quarters of play. Very few mistakes. Very few penalties tonight. Yeah, good point. I would agree with that, too. I, I did not notice that. I think we might have had more penalties against the coaches than we did the players. <laughs> Strongsville band, especially the seniors, are Get into it. This is their final fourth quarter. It's part of the senior marching band. It's a good thing there's lots to do for uh, 
kids in high school to keep them busy, right? You got band. Yeah. You got all the sports that all the clubs that go on. It's like Strongsville has their entire second team defense out there, which is a good idea as we start off the fourth quarter. I got a gang tackle after a pickup of about five yards. The official a little late in calling the whistle, but. Close to a first down. Looked like the running back for Brunswick carried the defensive end for Strongsville for several yards there. So games like this is, is, is great for the second string in that because the kids get to hear their names called, you know, which hasn't happened. And well, it's, it's they get a little playing time. And I mean, the downside of the, of the running clock is they don't get as much time as you would like, but it's, uh, it's a little nicer for the team that's down. Now on the scoreboard, you can see where they're congratulating all the senior players for the Mustangs. So first and 10 from the 41 yard line. Boy, that running back just keeps carrying people. Second down and about four. Second down and four. Stop led by number 28, Jack Lasenchek. Punches it up the middle for a first down. Robert Wisnicki once again picking up a first down for the Blue Devils. Oh. In on the tackle, number 35, senior Sean Gallagher. And number seven, senior Chris Pavlina. So Brunswick has several subs in out there, so Jaden Arnold is currently the quarterback. It's close to another first down. That's another nine yard carry. See it, Robert Wojcicki, number 10. The, he's a big guy. I don't have the the size on it. Maybe I do. Oh, 5'11", 195. It looks bigger than that out there. He seems to be carrying people. So second and one, I assume they're just going to try to run it up the middle. Or run it anywhere with uh, Wazicki here. And they hand off to him again, and he just barrels forward to get as many yards as he wants to. So first down inside the 40. Strongsville sends in uh, their first team line again. 
In on the stop, number 48, senior Logan Durr. And number 73, senior Xavier, I'm the only one, Vaughn. So first and 10 on the 37-yard line. Mazicki again, he's tackled short of the 35. Lala was the first one to hit him. Well, they put the first teamers back in. I think they were tired of Mazicki running over everybody. So these seniors, this could be their last game. Uh, definitely, the, I assume, the last game for Brunswick. Uh, Strongsville, if, if things go well, and they may be in the playoffs. Well, Zicky gets down here. near the first down. Well, they've done a nice job of turning the program around. Last year, they were six and four. This year, we're seven and three. We won our last four games last year and our first three this year, so that's seven straight wins. You probably have to go back quite a while to find out when the last time they won seven straight, but done a nice job with the program. Yeah, I think Lou Serena was definitely a, 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 quite an asset picking him up for this team. And his whole coaching staff, I know they've worked countless hours. And it shows. Well, the good thing about Coach Serena too is He's, he's got an open mind. He's open to, to new ideas, and he likes to use. He looks at all the talent he has and figures out what's the best way to use it. Which is, a, I think, is what you would want in a coach. Uh, close to the first down is was fourth and two. Let's see if they really spot it. I think they're gonna give it to him. Yep, yeah, first down. He gets the call. He gets across first down territory. In on the stop, number seven, Chris Petlina, and number 15, Andrew Keating. First and ten. Pick up of a couple yards. Was Nicky. Right ball. Got a little Nicky something goes. extra going on on the far side of the field there, and probably going to be on sportsman. Playing, making the stop. The plane got him from around the back and just rode him down. You know, we get some luck in. Uh, the other two teams should lose, and Strongsville makes it to the first round of the playoffs. Pretty good chance they're going to be playing Manor. And you know who's the happiest about that? All the bus drivers. All right, we, we're going on a field trip. We're working Friday night. Oh, well, that's true. And that's, uh, that's not a half-hour ride. So that uh, well, sportsman-like was on Brunswick. First and long, looks like we had movement. Junior, Courtney Hahn. Are they going to call it or are they going to, what's going on? Senior, Sasha Hammer. Or was it timeout? We're waiting, waiting for Junior an official call. Junior, Katie Keppel. Junior, Ashley Gross. And we are just going to go ahead with it. Okay. No call. Junior, Miranda Lujek. So first in Junior, Riley quite a bit. Hand off on the near side, but there was. Junior Allie Moore. Now we got an illegal on. procedure against Brunswick. Junior Kirsten Naso. Senior Eva Benamarenko. Senior Madeline Schnellerbeck. And 
senior, Jillian Ward. We welcome the cheer squad and fans from Brunswick High School. And the cheerleaders would like to thank all the Mustang fans for their support this season. Between doing the wiggle and cheering on the team, the fans have made Friday Night Lights the best night of the week. Thank you all, Mustang so fans. first down at about 25 from the 46-yard line. Brunswick will most likely try to pass here. Will they not been too successful this half? At the pass, he's being rushed out of the pocket and picks up quite oh. a few yards. Hit pretty hard before he goes out of bounds. By number 35, Sean Gallagher. So 22 to go. They bring out, pulling out the first teamers, putting in the second team seniors. Give them a little more playing time. Third down and long, about uh, 18. To be specific. The rain picks up a little bit. The band picks up a little bit. Sweep on the near side of the field, cuts the corner. Oh, he's going to go over in the, the top air, of but him. he's tackled anyway. I don't think so. Tackle by number 38, Garrett Manny on the tackle. So it'll be fourth and long. Grabbing him up, number 38, Darian Young. I'd assume they're just going to go for it. And yeah, it gets to the point of the game, too, where the referees go, don't throw a flag unless you have to. Well, it looks like they threw a flag here, so. So we'll take that play over. Thanks again to all of the Chapman Elementary Third and long. Minute and a half remaining. As part of Chapman Elementary Night of Pack and Dance Team. That's going to move by 15. Jaden Taylor, the ball carrier. Fourth and long. Stop big by number 35, Sean Gallagher. Also on the stop, number 73, Xavier Kwong. So now it's fourth down. I assume they're going to go for it. And now we just wait to see what the other two scores are. Yeah, yeah. Still don't have an update. One last pass. Just throw it. He's open deep. Pass is complete. And he's tackled short of the... Line of scrimmage, and that's the game, folks. Final score, Mustangs 45, Blue Devils nothing. Uh, once again, this is Matt Lawler along with Al Leonard. We're here at Serpentini Field at Pacatan Stadium. Thanks for a great season, and thanks again to our camera crew and all those down in the box. Uh, have a good rest of the evening. Right. Right. You want to say anything? And hopefully we'll be back next year and well, we'll see. pick we'll it up where we left off.